today's episode, we're building a truss for the hybrid diff. We're building rear diff armor for it. And we're installing a trail gear expandable breather. What's up guys? Today we're working on the hybrid diff. This is gonna be part three. If you guys remember from the last episode on this, part two of the hybrid diff, I'll put a link right here if you wanna go check it out. But in the last episode, we put on the spring perches, we, put the, we built these custom shock mounts, put them on. Uh, we had the shaft, we straightened it, we welded the axles so the axle, the entire axle assembly is straight now. So today we're building some custom trusses and I've already cut out a high tech cardboard template. I was working on it, it took me about 15 minutes and we're probably gonna double two rows of this and then a flat bar across the top. And I don't think I'm gonna trust this. Most of these little diffs aren't trussed on this side. Uh, but we're gonna have to cut this old breather tube off, probably weld a fish plate of some sort on top of there so that we can uh, drill and tap to install this here trail gear uh, flexible diff breather. I'm gonna try it out, hopefully it's gonna work. If not, we'll just thread a tube in there and we'll stick a regular old diff breather line on. But uh, I'm gonna give it a go. I like the idea of it, nice and small, no hoses and lines and whatnot going up to the engine compartment and just tidy up the engine compartment on the old Samurai. So let's get after it. I can't wait to get this diff done. Be going on a wheeling trip in a couple of weeks with two other YouTubers down in BC. That's gonna be a separate episode that you guys will have to just sit and wait and watch for it. Let's get after it. All right, so the vertical webbing of this truss is just gonna be made from eighth inch, uh, just plain old eighth inch mild steel. We're gonna trace it out. We'll cut her out with the plasma cutter and uh, see how she fits up and then the top that goes on top of this will be uh, a little heavier. It'll be a 3 16 plate. And I think that should make a sufficiently strong truss. And then possibly down the line, it'll be set up to accept uh, four link mounts on top of the diff. But we'll see about that later. Right now, we're just gonna worry about getting this done and see how it turns out. All right, so we got her fitting pretty darn close. I'm gonna probably keep these an inch, an inch and a quarter apart, inch and a half apart or something like that. And then I'm gonna cut this two inch piece of 3 16 to the right length, and it's gonna go right across the top of them. And of course, I'm gonna clean up all the rest off of this junk. And I'm gonna see if I got a small enough dimple die that maybe I can dimple die one or two spots in here just for some cool effect and a place to be able to wash the mud and junk out. Okay, we're just gonna stick this in our dimple die set and uh, crank her down with the jack. I like the way it looks so much. Let's put two in there. There we go. It's gonna look awesome. I think that's a pretty good looking truss here. We just gotta bend this tail down here so that it can get welded up top. And uh, it should work just fine. Fits real good and tight.
should be ready to weld up now. And I've left this side open so that any mud or whatever that gets in these holes, you can wash it all out and you wash it all out the end here. Should be fine. And then if any water gets in behind there or anything like that and in the winter it decides to freeze, it's not going to expand and crack this all up. It all has a place to run out. So when you're welding a truss up like this, you want to try and minimize heat as much as you can. I mean, you're welding, you're going to create heat, but you're trying not to torque and warp this thing real bad. You know, you, you should be able to touch it reasonably close to the welds without cooking your hands, you know. And you get her too hot and it's just going to warp this thing just like crazy. So just you know, small stitches, even these are maybe a bit long, they're a couple inches long. And just let it cool and then come back to her half an hour later, do a few more stitches, come back half hour later, do some more stitches, finish it up. And that should keep your axle as straight as possible. I mean, it is gonna torque a little bit, so it is what it is. But we got the shaft in here to try and hopefully hold it where it needs to be when it cools and uh, you do what you can do. All right, so we got the truss on, we got the diff breather uh, drilled and tapped. It's ready to go on. Now we're gonna build ourselves some diff armor so we don't back into a rock and cave this rear cover in and mangle up the old ring gear in there. So we're gonna continue on that tomorrow and uh, progress is going along pretty good. Catch you guys tomorrow. Okay, so I've been I've been cutting cardboard here, trying different designs, and just chopping up cardboard left, right, and center. And I think I've come up with a fairly simple design, and it's basically just like that, and it goes right in here. I'll show you. I'll bring you around and show you. So here's the simple, fairly simple design. It's just gonna go something. something about like that. I'll have to refine it a little bit yet, but then you can still get at your fill plug. It's gonna protect the bottom for the most part of this diff, and I'll probably make this rounded nicer when I put it to steel. And uh, I'm not sure if I'll continue this out to cover this, or if I'm just gonna leave it. I think I'll probably just leave it. Any rock you're gonna hit's gonna hit here or here before it hits this little lighter metal and what we're really worried about is where the ring gear runs. We don't want to hit a rock, drive it in through this case here and then the ring gear is cutting on it and then pretty soon you got an oil leak and if you don't know it, you kill the rear diff. So I'm going to transfer this to steel, cut it out with the plasma and uh, attempt to bend it and we'll see how she goes. So we'll just try and make this out of steel. It's going to be a little tricky. This here is the original plate that I made my diff armor, that I made the diff armor for the Samurai the very first time. Still the same plate of steel, so she's doing double duty. We're making another, another diff plate. Now there's bend lines, there and there, there to there. We need to transcribe those. And then you can see the lines are here, here, there, 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 and there. 
And then we'll just make some imaginary lines. There, there. That's our bend line. If you guys want to watch the original diff armor making, I'll put a link to it right up here somewhere and you can go watch it. Obviously we bend straight across here. Come on. There we go. Now we'll just plasma cut this out and then we'll drill holes along this line so that it makes it easier to bend this 3 16 plate and we'll weld her all up. So what I've done here is I just center punched a bunch of spots where I'm going to drill some holes through this plate and that'll help being able to bend this plate a lot easier when there's holes in it. And then we will just bend it all into shape and then when we're all done, we'll just weld up the holes. So you, here you can see it's starting to take shape. And we will have to just keep adjusting spots here and there till we get it where we want. This is going to stick out really far. So I'll have to probably end up cutting these and cutting in here a little bit more so I can bend these in a little bit more. Because right now the way it's sitting, it's going to be way out here maybe. That might not be too bad. It looks like I gotta bend this one in more. Getting there. Just gotta bend that stuff in a little more yet. Pretty cool. Let's weld her up. So here is our here's our diff armor and after after looking at it for a while and kind of sleeping on it I feel like it's too far away so what I'm gonna end up doing is just taking the plasma cutter and cutting a strip off cutting another drain hole or drain notch back in here and uh, just refitting it and seeing how it looks then I think it'll be a lot better it'll it'll seem it'll flow better with the diff right now it just it seems odd sticking way out. So I think I'm gonna change it. Let's cut her. There we go. I think that looks a little better. Get her centered, see how it looks. And I think we'll weld her in right there. I think that'll do. I think that's the look I'm looking for. Gives you a fair bit of protection. Maybe not up so high, but really when you're backing into stuff, you're gonna be hitting it down low chances of hitting way up here I mean you should hit this plate before you hit here so I think I'm happy with that I'm gonna weld that sucker in place So that's it for stage three on the old hybrid diff build the only thing I have left to do is build a couple little brackets for the brake lines and the emergency brake line just to hold them up and in place. Other than that, she's done. New bearings, new axles, 430 gear set going in here with an air locker. Should be pretty cool. So if you guys are enjoying this sort of content where I'm doing a ton of fabbing and stuff like that, you stick around to this channel because the FJ is gonna have a whole whack of fabrication to it. 
So with that being said, if you guys are enjoying it, go ahead, subscribe, share, like these videos, hit the bell to be notified. Don't forget to turn on notifications. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Fabin underscore adventures. And if you want to help support the channel, go ahead, look in the description below. There'll be a link to my Patreon, click in there, join up. It's fairly cheap and it helps the channel out big time. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch you next Friday.